I'm going to chemist. You know she got plenty, plenty food for me to eat. Mommy, will you make it today? This is a one pan meal that is guaranteed to stick to your thighs, your ribs, and put you to sleep. And it looks so good that I had to do two separate cheese pulls. That's how bomb this was. But actually, it was really easy to make. So I gave my chicken thighs lipo and I seasoned them real good. I showed you how to make green seasoning, right? Well, that's what I made here. I made some green seasoning and I put about a quarter cup to a half a cup of that green seasoning in that chicken. It brings us so much flavor. Then I used this brown girl spice poultry seasoning, put about a teaspoon of that, also some garlic powder and smoked paprika. And baby, this Queen's Marie, I put that on everything seasoning. It's so good. Add about a tablespoon and a half of that. Y'all know I like getting my hands messy. I like to feel the meat. <laughs> and make sure that all my meat is completely coated in seasoning because I don't want to bite no part of it and not have no seasoning on it. I also added a little bit of parsley for some color and parsley does have a little bit of flavor to it. And I let that sit at room temperature for about 20 minutes so I got everything else prepped and ready to go. Then in a cast iron skillet, I use my favorite grapeseed oil and I make sure I put enough to cover the bottom of the pan. Once it got real hot like me, I went ahead and dropped my chicken. I would say skin side down, but it's boneless, skinless chicken thighs. So I put the side down where the skin would have been. This is getting a good sear and color to it. But also don't worry about the sear being too prominent because when you put it in the oven, trust me, it would get a crust at the top of it. I used a 10 inch cast iron skillet for this and everything fit in just fine. Once I moved a few things over, of course. I let these sear at a high temp for about two to three minutes without touching it. After that, I flipped them over and I turned the heat just a little bit lower than it was. And I cooked them for about two more minutes on the bottom. For this dish, we are not cooking the chicken all the way through the first time around. We're going to cook it with the rice. Why do I feel like a lot of cooks and chefs tap their meat <laughs> when they flip it over? Why do we do that? Anyways, once they cooked for two, three minutes, I took them out and I put them on a plate. I always make sure to put them on a plate that won't let the juices fall off of it. So a kind of a plate that has like a little deep bottom to it. Because we don't waste no juices around here. Now, remember that bowl that I used to season the chicken? Well, I'm not going to waste any of the seasoning from that bowl either. I added one can of cream of chicken to that bowl and two and a half cups of chicken broth. Then I started mixing it with the spoon and realized, yeah, that ain't gonna work. So I got my, my cute little tiny whisk. I used the whisk because I wanted to be lump free because this will be the liquid we use to cook the rice in the chicken. Now back to this pan. All those little bits of flavor at the bottom, we want all of that. I added some chicken bouillon base and I made sure to scrape up all that seasoning that cooked off of the chicken when we seared it. And come on now, you know I was gonna add some butter. Once I added that knob of butter, it was a bit easier for me to scrape up all that bottom goodness on there. Once I had everything scraped up, I went ahead and I added the rice. Now I know this is a big rice debate about washing your rice, not washing your rice, when you should wash your rice, why you should wash your rice. But honestly for me, I pick and choose when and why to wash my rice. If I want my meal to have a little bit more starch to it, I won't wash my rice. If I wanted to have less starch to it, I do wash my rice. And for this one, I didn't, and you can do what you want to do. Then, of course, we season every step. I season with a little bit of that poultry season from earlier, some garlic powder, and I wanted some color to the rice. I didn't want it to be white rice. I kind of wanted it to be yellow rice. So I added some turmeric. Then I mixed all that up real good. I didn't want no rice left behind. All still while making sure to scrape the bottom of the pan to get all those bits of loveliness into the rice so it cooks all together and be flavorful as heck. Now, my kids personally like soggy broccoli. I don't. I like crunchy broccoli. But it's for them too, so I threw the broccoli in at this moment. If you do not like soggy broccoli, do not put your broccoli in at this moment. Wait until the halfway point and add it in towards the end of the cooking process. And it don't have to be big chunks because you don't want it to absorb too much of the liquid. You want everything to cook just right. Once I added on the broccoli, I gave it a little bit more of a stir. And as you could tell here, I didn't add any salt to any of this because I know my seasonings and I know what seasonings have salt and which ones don't and how much I need to put for each one. Then I added my cream of chicken and broth mixture and I just stirred it all around. 
Of course, I measured it kind of just right so everything could be completely covered and submerged in this mixture. I mixed it just a little bit, not too much, and then I let it come to a boil. Once it came to a boil, it's time to add the chicken. Now, I told you I don't waste no flavor, right? So that juice from that chicken that sat in that plate, I added that to that too. And then I nuzzled the chicken back in there. You kind of want them spaced out just a little bit, but they can kind of touch, but you do not want to completely crowd this pan. You want everything to cook and to cook evenly. Once they were all in there, I covered it and cooked it for 15 minutes on 400. Or cook it until you see that cream of chicken and broth mixture completely gone. Now, if you don't like cheese or you lactose intolerance, you do not want to add cheese to this part. But I like cheese, so I took all the chicken out and I added my cheese to the rice. Now, you're going to be real gentle with this part, okay? Real gentle. You do not want the rice to become so soggy and mushy that you would not like it. Now, you can add what you want, but I added about a half a cup of mild cheddar and a half a cup of sharp cheddar. Then I got a fresh mozzie ball, and I went ahead and broke that up and put bits of it within the rice. Like I said, this part is optional, but this is a cheesy chicken and broccoli rice. Once I added the cheese to my liking, I went ahead and I stirred it real gentle. I kind of folded it in, but I used a spoon, and I did that until the cheese mixture was completely into the rice. Once I got everything in there, I went ahead and added the chicken back on top and make sure to nuzzle that right back into the rice. And the best part about using chicken thighs is they don't dry out as quickly as you use your chicken breasts. So even after all this, it was still juicy. And actually before I added the chicken breast, I added a little bit more cheese to the top just to get that, you know, cheese crust on top of it. Once I did all of that, I put it back in the oven at 400 for about 10 minutes uncovered. I really believe the uncovered part is key to it because with it being uncovered, you get the cheese to melt. we we'll also get a nice crust on top of the cheese at the same time getting a nice color and crust on top of the chicken. I use boneless skinless thighs, but you can use what you want, but just make sure that you adjust your time accordingly because if the chicken has bone and skin on it, it might take a little bit longer to cook. And you don't want your rice getting too mushy and too soggy. I personally do not like mushy, soggy rice. So some might want to use chicken legs for this, and I say definitely cook the chicken legs a little bit longer on the sear process so that it doesn't take too long to cook with the rice in the oven. And don't mind me, I have cooked hands. Those chickens were hot, but I use my hands just the same time. Again, you want to make sure to space it out so that everything cooks evenly and you can actually see the cheese melt perfectly. The thighs will shrinken up when you cook them, so by the time you get to this part, the thighs should be a little bit shrunken so you'll have more room in the pan. And when you take it out, you get boom. Cheesy chicken, broccoli, and rice. All right, bye. <laughs> Make sure to try these two videos right here if you like quick and kid-friendly meals.